Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the classic world of darkness. We're all friends, we're here to have fun, but our story can include graphic violence, drug use, sexual content, and other mature themes. We've talked at our table about safety, comfort, and consent, both as players and storytellers. We know what to expect, we're all excited to be here, and we want you to feel the same. So listener discretion is advised. Now, let's walk the path of night. Last time on Path of Night. When the Quartery investigated Marcos' death, Neil determined that Reese was responsible for the murder. To prevent Miles from illegally embracing Marcos, Neil used sorcery to ensure the ghoul stayed dead. Britta revealed the Black Crescent Moon on her palm to Johnny, causing the Bruja to recall his traumatic Sabbat embrace. As the Quartery attempted to recover from the night, Johnny learned that the court of New Haven is on the verge of declaring a blood hunt on Neil. Miles, you, Bretta, and Neil arrive to Elysium. And what car do they arrive? The Storm Purple Lamborghini Diablo. How much blood am I able to get before we go? Each of them holds within them 10 uh, traits of blood. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you can take up to 20. No. (laughs) um, And anywhere in between, 0 to 20. I'd like to take uh, four total, two from each. Sounds good. She does that as uh, she directs Neil to wipe the blood from his face. And when she comes back, she makes sure the two of them look right and are settled and ready to get into the storm purple Lamborghini. Tim, can you please describe to us what Miles looks like going to court right now? Because I don't think he's in his usual, like, buttons all the way up kind of look. I feel like he's dark Miles right now, and I want to know what that looks like. Dark Miles. I just feel like... Hair swept back, he's carrying his katana. Yeah. Long blue coat. I mean, he's a sheriff, he can have that katana. (laughs) Oh, the katana's definitely coming this time around. Oh, yeah. Is he wearing a tie? Yes, but it's only a half Windsor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I am not currently. No, I'm thinking like, yeah. I, I'm now that like put in my head like the the semi dark blue suit with the open open collared shirt and everything else like that. French cuffs with no cufflinks. <laughs> just not giving a fuck. <laughs> just mm. just like fucking showing up, and this is what you guys like just holding the katana in one hand. Just fuck it. Britta makes it damn sure to be wearing her gloves once more before they get into the car. Neil is essentially catatonic and has not taken care of himself at all. Mm. Uh, and, like, blood wiped off the face will, if it's anything more than just a smear from listening, will have to be done by someone else. Mm. He's wearing the exact same clothes as he was, despite the fact that he is has been a kindred for 30 years looks like he's about to throw up and has that face on the entire time. Like, I haven't had any contents in my stomach for 30 years, but I'm about to lose it. Britta is making damn sure. Like, she's keeping sort of a watchful Toreador eye on Neil's appearance. Anytime there's even, like, a threat of a smear of blood, she has a makeup wipe at the ready. Uh, she's As everyone's settling into the Lamborghini, she's trying to straighten Neil's collar. Uh, almost like in a very official sort of way. Uh, he doesn't fight any uh, like attempts to make him look even somewhat presentable for court. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he also doesn't help in any way. He just like he's just so far inside his own head at this mm-hmm. point that Neil basically doesn't exist on the car ride over. Neil, you gotta remember that you've helped this domain. All right, you've done so much for them, and we we can maybe use that. All right. What, 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 what about my filing system? When we get there, Miles, I'm going to try and see if we can talk to Elsa. Um, you might want to make calls before we get there, if possible. Just right. let her know. Then we need I'll, to get things in motion. Then I'll call her. Also, Neil, Johnny's making sure your stuff isn't touched, so you need to pull yourself together. <sighs> I don't, but I don't know if he knows what's important and what isn't important. He's not going to let anyone touch anything, including himself. Okay. Okay. Bretta will pull out her phone to call Elsa Linden. 
as we tear through the streets at high speed. Hello? Uh, hi, this is Britta. Um, we heard what was going down at court. We're coming as soon as possible, but I was hoping that I could talk to you. What did you wish to discuss? Well, um, naturally, I'm worried about Neil. Nothing. It's... He's not his sire. That's ridiculous. Why is that ridiculous? He's been with us helping the whole time, and I just was hoping that maybe that you would, um, help. Okay. I have a question for you. Yes? Is it true that he practices Asimite magic? He's always helped the domain. You see how strange it is that you wouldn't answer my question, and that you, kindred with your own secrets who has only been in this domain for a handful of months, would make such an insistence. I know it's strange, but you know that he's loyal to the domain. You know that he helped you. And I know that that he should have, but I just hope that you can see in him that he's... But I don't think this conversation can advance if you won't answer my questions. Britta makes eye contact with Miles. I can't listen in on people's phone conversations. He says to her. <laughs> she kind of points to Neil. Covers the phone. Mute. Do I tell her the truth? You need to trust her. There's no point in you not dealing with her straight. Unmuted? Yes. But he's not, he's not his sire. You understand how much there might be a little difference? I don't know anything about his sire, really, but... The last time I helped your quarry, your friend Miles showed up to my haven and squeezed me for a life boom. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to help you, Britta. And in exchange, you are going to procure for me two life boons from your quarry. I do not care who, from whom they are given. Would you accept instead? No. Not even the cancellation of that boon? As I understand it, Miles likes hardball. So that's the ball we're going to play. Then if two life boons is the cost, then that's what it takes. Two members of your coterie. And let's be very clear. I don't like hardball. And I find it regrettable that this is the game we must play. She hangs up. That's bullshit. She started that hardball. Miles, it doesn't matter who started it. If she's going to help, and I think we need her too. Yeah, she's the one who started trying to squeeze me first. All I did was this. Guys, All um, right, one of these life boons is coming from me. Who else? Can we'll find out. Don't make any promises yet until we figure out what's going on there. No, we need this. No, we don't. What else do we have? We don't know the situation yet. By indebting ourselves before we know what's going on... You're the one who said there are certain choices we have to make. I'm willing to do this. I understand that. But taking advantage of our fear is what these people do. Our fear. Yes. Right now is what we have. What else do we have? I, I, the only other way I see out of this, and trust me when I say that I know that you don't have any wish to do this, is to... A Apologize to Reese. He takes a second. This was going to come for him regardless of the circumstance that me and Reese had. But... When he chose to start participating with Asimite Sorcery, it was always going to be a thing that came up at some point or another. But whenever Roland's moves, it's Reese behind it. It's quite possible. Roland is also captured by his fear. His grace is not going to move from this unless we have people on our side that's part of it correct who else but do we have and we need our we need also too selves remember the fact that this coterie is effective we and are. by pissing us off they do a lot to lose that and that's part of the reason they're trying to get us under their thumbs 
Miles, it sounds like you offended Elsa, okay? And I I understand that you think that she offended you, but she has way more power than we do. We're effective, sure, but this is court now. It's not about what we can accomplish through our talent or our willpower. It's about politics. Yes, I understand that. So we need her. We need anyone that we can get on our, on our side. And I realize that you might... I, I, I can't say it enough... It, Part of it is that they need us, too. That's why they go through these things. It's all a series of control. But if they were going to call a blood hunt on Neil, they decided they didn't need him. Which ones of us are they willing Before to cut out? Before you start out? throwing out life boons here and there, this is how Roland's ended up indebted to Reese. So that's why you must think carefully. And the reason why Elsa's pissed off is because... She knew she owed that. And she doesn't like being under someone else's thumb, either. I will place myself under Elsa's thumb if it saves Neil. Boons? The whole point of Boons is supposed to be giving someone a reason to care about you. We're supposed to be important as a coterie to these elders? Fine. I'll give her a reason to keep me alive. I'll give him her a reason to keep this coterie alive. But we need two of them. And I know that you don't want to rush into this. And I'm not exactly happy about it either. Then but take I don't a think second. No. No, I won't take a second. This needs to happen. I'm calling Wen. And she's calling Wen. Uh, um why isn't it me? Britta will pause and pulling out her cell phone. Do you think she'd accept one from you if she already owes you one? I don't I don't know. She's, I don't know. Hey, who are you calling? I was going to call Wynn to see if she would do the life boon too. I, if this boon's being thrown around, if it's me, I'll do it. It's fine. I won't even cancel my other cash them in. I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I, I just, um, because that gives her more reason to want me around, uh, rather than wanting to get rid of me and that, the thing. But, um, if you're calling Wynn, can you, uh, can you put them on speaker? I, I don't think that Johnny knows. Uh, that, so like, okay, the guitars are supposed to be in order of when they were sold and, and created, right? Like, there's a system to it, and I need him to know. Britta calls when, but decidedly does not put her on speaker. When back at the, um, uh, at Miles' place, has run up to the truck and kind of baps on the window of the truck. I think you're, you're already just saying that you were running out the door for me. I yeah. figured that we got in together and, and okay. Johnny was just like, ah, mm. I guess I got backup. So as they're cruising around, when Wynn's phone goes off and she picks it up. Hey, uh, I Brita, made a, what's wrong? I made a call. Okay. Elsa knows that it's true that Neil practices the magic, but shit, she'll accept two life boons from the coterie to help. So one's coming from me. One's coming from Neil. It should be stated that I don't believe that we should be doing that. Are they all right? What's going on? Elsa wants two life boons in order to help Neil. Well, tell her to get stuffed. Johnny is of the opinion she should get stuffed. All right, that I... matches That matches with Miles' opinion, but here's the thing. I don't see another way out of this, and every time that someone's telling me to calm down and not do it, do it they're not saying another solution. That's because we haven't been presented the whole case yet. Mention the guitars. No. So we need elders on our side. We're losing all of the elders that we had at all connections to. Okay. Anyway, I thought you should know before you walk into whatever you're walking into, because because I don't know what telling her that means. I don't know if that information spreads or not. Is she going to accept one from Neil? I don't know. <sighs> if she doesn't put my name on. Johnny gives a look over at uh, Wynn in the passenger seat like, you crazy. <laughs> look, I'm I'm willing to do what it takes to survive this. And if the day comes when I have to break that boon, we'll cross that when it comes. As I see it, I already owe my life to all of, my life to all of you, so. You don't, but. All right. So we have that plan, I guess. Miles, you can try to talk me out of it, but... Look, Elsa is playing the Elder game. She... If she can help, I'm willing to pay for it. I need to focus on making sure they don't even get inside Neil's Haven, because that'll be the final nail in his coffin. 
Yes, here's the thing. Elsa was willing to talk to me, even though she was offended, and I don't... I'd like to talk to her. I don't want this to be another... I don't want this to be the story of our relationship with elders in our domain. Okay. That feels like we're putting the cart before the horse a little bit, Britta. When are they already at the court? Are you there yet? We're close. Not yet. Tell her to stop worrying about court before she's even there. Once she gets there, tell her to have a conversation with Elsa and act like she's important and stop being like a little like... She just... called her, Johnny. Oh, I get that. But she needs to remember that she's important and that she's got better... But Just tell her to act like, like, like she's as important as we know she is. Johnny says believe in yourself. When you say it like that. Listen, whatever conversation, Miles, that you had with Elsa, it didn't go well. She's upset, and... Yeah, she was upset she couldn't push me around. Sure. I honestly don't care. I just want us to live, and... Right, I... and by letting her push us around. I get it. And now we're in a position to be pushed around. I, I get to some of those degrees. But... Put Miles on. Britta hands the phone to Miles kind of sharply. Miles speaking. It's Wynn. Look, you brought me into this coterie because I don't have the same opinions as you. You brought me in because I see things different than you. Right. You brought me in because you need people around you who don't just yes-man you. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm driving at high speeds. Can, I'm, I am agreeing with you. Then slow the fuck down. Wynn, can you do that speaker thing? I want to hear. You're on speakerphone now. Hello? Can you hear me? Yep. You need to acknowledge that this is maybe not the best solution right now. Which solution? The let's play hardball. I'm not playing hardball. You she are specifically exactly said. playing hardball. You Both are, of you shut up. You're not my dad. I don't have time for this. I'm not playing hardball. And I didn't play hardball with her until she started to push it last time. This is people trying to gain control over us. We need to let them sometimes. N yes. To get what we want, On which is Neil terms. surviving. My terms are set, Niles. Neil is worth it to me. I understand that. Did you really think I was going to let him die? I think you were close. Really? Johnny reaches out and puts a hand on Wynn just to kind of, and gives her a look out of the corner of his eye like, hey, maybe peel it back a, a degree or two. I think that you get so hung up in not being controlled that you lose sight of us sometimes. I mean all of us. Look how fragile your world is. Already, your quarry is frightened, dragging you into these meaningless games. This is your truth, Miles. I know that deep down you see how fragile this court is, how fragile all courts are. And you simply lack the power to enforce your will. I look forward to seeing how you deal with this helplessness, the meekness that is the truth of your discordery. Miles, this isn't the time that I wanted to have this discussion, but she was specifically offended. The list is too long. We have to make some form of event amends. She was going to be specifically offended regardless of what had happened because it's in her interest to be offended. Is that Britta in the background? I can't hear her. Can you, can you put her on speaker too? Oh my god. Yeah. Miles passes the phone over, shakes his head. Would you please put that on there? I can't do high speed driving and switch it over. Britta takes it but does not narrate that she's putting on speakerphone. Look, I, I'm in agreement with Miles and all of this. It, Look, we, we saved Elsa's life. She knows what she's doing. She's she's the one that's playing hardball with us. She's trying to push you around because you're a new kindred and a new embrace as far as she sees. Wait till you get to court, get a better view of the, uh, of, of the scenario. I don't think that Miles has actually done anything that breaks any laws that I'm aware of. Reese just has it out for us and sounds like he's trying to make some power plays. So keep an eye on him. I think you mean Neil. No, I think Reese is trying to make power plays. Right, but I'm saying Neil didn't break any laws. Right, right, right. That's what I mean. Neil didn't break any laws. Uh, so 
don't worry about that. Just try to placate Elsa. She's an elder. They're weird and old and get all kinds of weird notions about etiquette. I think this is the only way that we have a working relationship with Elsa moving forward. We saved her life, and she owes Anil a life boon. But she owes it angrily, and she has every tool that she would ever need in order to make that... So we'll, so so don't don't play hardball with her. Go back to playing softball. When you see her, give her compliments. Tell her how pretty her dress is. <laughs> Things like that work with Toreador. I, I, all right. There's as the whole coterie has been like arguing and going back and forth. Neil has just been getting more and more agitated in the back, and then looks and from the back seat is like, "There's there there's another option here." What? There is another way out of all of this. You guys stop fighting over it. Uh, Miles doesn't want anybody to be in any sort of um, debt to anyone. Uh, and the only reason that we are thinking about being in debt to anyone is to get me around the things that I've chosen to do. So the other way around it is we just go to court and I tell them everything. And then that's it then we don't have to talk to anybody. Then I I don't want you guys to get hurt because of the things that I've been doing. So if it's everyone, like, watching all of you at each other's throats versus versus just, you know, me eating whatever comes, that's not a hard decision for me. Yeah, but we're not going to let that happen. But... And I'm not against owing but, people. It's just this degree is egregious. But Miles, what? What if you just did? Though? Because you wouldn't be in this position if you weren't working with us. Wouldn't Specifically, I? if you weren't. You didn't even know until like a month ago. Right, but you were still using your stuff, your magic, to help us at various points and the domain. So it's one way to look at it. I mean, you were probably doing it on your own, but you were using it more when we started asking you to. You want us to think selfishly? If we let you go down for this, each and every one of us who has a pass is going down next. All of us who have something to lose are going down next. I I have stayed alive this long by having no one look at me. And now that they're looking at me, it means they're looking at all of you, too, because the rest of you can't not be there. But if I can just go away, then no one's looking at the rest of you quite the same way. Everyone needs to listen up real carefully. You're all losing sight of what's happening here. This is Reese coming at us. We stopped his play in Elysium, and he tried to kill us. It didn't work there. And now he's making he made a play at Marcos. He's making a play at you now. This is just Reese taking swings at us. Get to court and defend yourselves because it didn't work in, in, in when we actually fought him in physical combat. Now he's trying to take it take swings at us in the in the social game. So keep that in mind. Use your assets. Don't spend any unnecessary life boons and just play it cool. You don't know what's happening, just like just like Miles said. You're putting the cart before the horse. You don't know what's happening until you actually get to court. I'm willing to take a look around if we have the time, but I don't think we do. I think we're showing up, and I think the court is going to be in a rabble, and I think immediately we're going to go and have to talk to His Grace about all of this. That's a great theory, and I'm re- uh, I will be very sad if it's the case, but... Just be prepared to do, to take course on that. It hasn't happened yet, Britta. Listen to Miles. Don't put the cart before the horse. The Lamborghini arrives to Elysium. Outside, there's already a crew of bully boys and a Tremere waiting to assist in detaining the rogue thaumaturge. Uh, before we get out of the car, Miles, um, you're the sheriff, so go ahead and act like the sheriff. I'm, for these purposes, 
I think, I mean, if you're looking at, at what Rita was talking about, what you were talking about at the same page is that neither one of you should, um, be treating me like a friend right now. I get out of the Lamborghini, move the seat forward so that he can get out. Jeff, you're greeted politely as, uh, they make their way to, uh, approach got- Neil. One already has, like, thick chain and manacles. And it does not look like the that Neil is in for a very good time. I will stop them from running. It's like, are, are we stepping beyond your position here? I'm taking him in. Yes, but by orders of the prince, he is to be bound and detained in such a manner that he cannot perform his uh, disgusting magics. Great. Give me those. Yes, sir. He kind of offers the chains, and then they give this, like, metal bit that's supposed to be like put into his mouth so that it his jaws like locked into place neil has a very like it's a weird look on his face that i think can best be described as like a dog looking at you like it's okay put me down well we're gonna put them on there but we don't have to do it in a rough manner there's no reason we can't do it in a easygoing way and such that it doesn't have to be like jamming it into him of course uh sheriff there's no reason to indicate to this diablerist that uh, we are not civil people. They kind of like look almost like annoyed that you're showing oh, no, I'm... kindness to Asimites. I will put the stuff on him. They can yeah. give me space. Yeah. And then we'll go in. Yep. And I will take him with me. Uh, they like stop you at the door. He, he has to go to the room. You know, they kind of like look at gesture towards Britta, indicating it's the same one that she had been put in a while ago. I'll bring him over to the room and be like, that should be. This should be good. You're going to stand outside this room? Yes, Sheriff. Uh, well, the Tremere are going to head in and investigate and determine the degree to which he is influenced by his magic. Sounds like a sheriff responsibility. I didn't remember making any bullet Again, sir, of- the, the prince has That's- made very clear his intentions regarding Asimite magic. All right. Well, give me five minutes before you go in there. Uh, we're going to go in there, and we thank you for understanding, Sheriff. Again, we are not here to argue or give you a hard time, but when the prince speaks, yeah. we do as he wishes. What is of course. Miles, are you ready to go in? Yeah. As the two of you head over, um, Reese can be seen actually walking past you and heading to the room. Britta makes eye contact with Miles. He's not looking at anyone. There is a tight-fisted grab on that, his current weapon. Britta's eyes kind of dro- drop then down towards the katana. She takes in that grip, looks to Miles, and then slowly takes one step forward to indicate to walk with her. Oh, wait, Reese is walking that way? Yes, Reese is headed to the room that Neil is in. And then I'm heading towards the prince. Yes. Opposite direction. So right. you guys are, yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys, that's that what I'm saying. He walks past you. Right. Mm-hmm. That means he's not with the prince currently. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm going to talk to the prince. All right. Do what you think, but I'm saying that she's also not playing as well as she could. I understand, and I appreciate you caring. I just, it's a price I'm willing to pay. Negotiate. I'll try. I Like I said, I'm not against being indebted. This is just a way too far of a step. And the only reason I wanted that boon in the first place was to put her in a posi- better position without Reese being around. But things are changing. It didn't come off that way, Miles. Well, she was insisting on a lot of stuff from us after saving her. She was insistent that we repay her and give her many things for saving her life and keeping her safe in this domain. I'm gonna go talk to her. Yes, I just wanted you to be aware of things from my perspective. I know. But... And... But I need to play this a different way, Miles. I got it. And I'm... We need to make our choices. I get it. So what but I'm I need do, you to be informed. I know. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over there and apologize to her. And I'm going to pay the life boons. I'm going to ask for her help. And I'm going to make it clear that I'm grateful. That's my intention. I'm going to apologize for the Coterie. Including you. Alright. But you'll be inviting more trouble in the future. <sighs> I hope not, but I'll see you. It's not even a hope. And he'll just move away. And with that, my trajectory is towards wherever she is. Okay. Okay. 
cut away to Wynn and Gianni, who have now just pulled up to uh, Neil's Haven. Immediately, the first thing you notice is the police lights that are everywhere. And there are police officers all over the place redirecting people within that like perimeter that's been created by NHPD. You see some bully boys, some of the common visages worn by local Nosferatu, and you see members of the Tremere clan. They are like inside. You kind of hear the occasional like shelf be like knocked over. Some of the bully boys are just kind of like knocking. It's like the Bruja bully boys that were tight with Shaw, kind of knocking things down and kind of like having a pretty good time. The police officers are kind of like not blissfully unaware, but kind of accepting like, you know, this is like another day on the job for them. So I can see that all of these uh, bully boys are already inside and there's New Haven police that have cordoned off the whole scene. Yes. Wynn looks to Johnny and... I'm following your lead, man. I have one set of skills for this situation. I was really hoping we'd get here before this happened, but... <sighs> Wynne kind of cracks her neck, just in anticipation of what's coming. Do you have any pull with the police? I do know a guy in dispatch, but I don't think he's going to be able to pull all of this away from here. I mean, it's worth a shot. If you, Even if he can thin it out some, this place has metal shutters, we can pull them down and take care of things inside if we need to have enough of this area to work with. Tell you what. I'm gonna drop you off here. I'm gonna go cause a distraction. Do you just want me to be an owl? That might help. Um, I need you to be able to get in there and make sure that, that uh, whatever's going on in there stops going on in there. Um, or if they draw off, I need you to be able to go in and at least secure the... Uh, Neil's friend. All right. Yeah? Nope. Uh, Johnny will pull up and uh, let Wynn out. Wynn gets out. She kind of taps the door a couple times in a move of solidarity. And she just kind of stands at the police barricade, pretending to be an onlooker. Give me a perception plus alertness roll. Oh, that's really, really good. No. No successes. You can kind of hear that there's some sort of like conversation. They're interviewing someone in there. Uh, but you don't get a look at who. Wynn kind of looks to the officers that are present. Do they look like they're rookies or do these look like veteran cops? They look like older cops. A lot of them are kind of a little bit out of shape. They've got that like that really kind of classic 1970s cop mustache going on. Uh, these are kind of the guys who are really kind of thinking about their pension and retiring. Wind kind of watches for a few minutes and then kind of slips away down an alley. There's like a whistle as you go, but that's it. What kind of whistle? Like a police stop whistle or a, hey, lady whistle? It's like a, it's like a cat call whistle. She sticks up her middle finger as she walks away. Like there's some clapping and like the cops kind of like joke around with each other about their sexual harassment. They're a classy bunch. You hear actually Johnny turn the truck off when you notice that all the cops are kind of on the doughy side and a little bit like on the more retired edge of things mm -hmm. and he actually jumps out uh of the truck and walks over to where you are what's up i was gonna do something stupid but, I th but i'm thinking that we might actually be able to play this a little bit quieter okay why don't you use that phone of yours and give kabir a call see if he's in the area some of him's his tricks might be wor uh worth their weight in gold right now i'm gonna go see if i can't get past that cordon okay when pulls out her phone and dials kabir's number that she inexplicably hasn't deleted. He answers immediately. <laughs> Hello, my person. <laughs> sorry, too much laugh. <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> Hello, my pussycat. I knew you would call eventually. You're stealing all my old lines. That's not the own. It's your, it's your NPC. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> it's cops out. Okay. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, I have missed you. Yeah, missed you too. Um, look, I don't have a lot of time. I need you here now. Yeah, I will be there. <laughs> Kabir, this, would you like to, yeah, yes. this is important. I know. This is, I will spit in your coffee for all eternity important. <laughs> I will spit in anything you want me to spit in. <laughs> I am on my way. Do, do you know Will where? Not. 
Where are you? <laughs> Do you know where Neil's pawn shop is? I did not know that Neil has a pawn shop. All right. The address is this address. What would you like me to bring? Every trick you can think of. We're looking to... I have many tricks, and I will bring them all for you. He hangs up. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Johnny walks up to the uh, to the police cordon. <laughs> I feel like you're losing Kabir off your sheet and slowly migrating over to him. <laughs> I, I will give her those points. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with sharing custody of it. <laughs> um, Johnny will walk up to the uh, the cordon and... Uh, Can I help you, sir? Yeah, I'm actually a contact of Suarez's. They kind of look between each other. And he actually will just kind of put on a confident swagger and just kind of brush past the cordon and start walking towards the pawn shop. The cop rests his hand on your shoulder. Hey, I just want to say I'm sorry about what happened to him. And they kind of go back to what they were doing. But they, they do not stop you from going in. Johnny kind of like grits his teeth a little bit and like closes his eyes, but then keeps on walking right towards the uh, the shop. As you head in, uh, you will note that the Nosferatu primogen seems to kind of be overseeing the investigation. And at his flanks is a pair of Tremere. They are in the middle of interviewing a young woman that they found in the pawn shop. She has dark skin, chocolate kind of like colored hair, hazel eyes, and has this very like tight lipped, aloof demeanor as they interrogate her with a slew of clearly offensive questions. Do I recognize anyone from the sheriff's office? Yeah, there's like a half dozen bully boys from the sheriff's office here. And are they just kind of like standing around doing nothing? No, they're they're knocking stuff over, and a couple of them have like rolled up these old comic books and tucked them into their back pocket. They're just kind of being like massive shitheads. Apparently, though, you kind of start getting the impression based on the conversations they're having with each other, that the reason that they're being massive shitheads is because they fully believe that Neil is in fact his sire, and they all fucking hate him. They believe it's whose sire? That Neil, your Neil, is in fact Neil's sire, who is a blood-hunted Malkavian who had signed over to the blood cult that controls Alamut and is this, like, rampant Diablerist that escaped the blood hunt. Oh, they, and they think that he's the same person? That's what they're there for. Gotcha. They're there to look for signs of Asamites and or, the, like, you know, blood magic, like ritual components and it looks like they're setting a bunch of stuff aside and are interviewing an asamite johnny's going to put on his best manager voice because he's i think he's one of the more veteran bully boys in the domain he is and he's going to be like hey you lot drop the comics get your shithead asses out out of this place now i want the place cleared and i want a word with him and he points at the nosferatu i kind of look between you and the Nosferatu, particularly the Bruja that were involved in the scuffle with Setites some time ago. They kind of give you guys space, but don't seem to leave the pawn shop. Just because there's not a roof to throw one of your asses off of don't mean I won't punish you the same. The Nosferatu looks at you. There is no need for hollow threats. <sighs> you smell like something I ate once. I don't think we've met. Name's Johnny Saxon. You may yet choke on it again. And he turns to the young woman that he's interviewing and kind of snatches her up by the neck and exerts some sort of discipline and her eyes kind of like go soft and her aloof demeanor kind of crumbles and she becomes passive and weak. I understand you have some questions. He says, like, kind of sounding more human because of the the mask that he's wearing. What the hell are you doing here? Well, I'm here because I'm the Scourge. And this young woman seems to be an uninvited guest. I see. Congratulations on the uh, promotion, I guess. How do you enjoy working for uh, Upton Rollins? Well, it's much like how you must enjoy it, save that I have an actual position. So who is this uninvited guest? It appears that this is young woman traveled to New York. 
or was involved in some sort of uh, trip from Baghdad to New York. She is an Asimite. Uh, we have determined that she is aware of the existence of both Neil and his sire. And we also have determined that she is familiar with the practices of Duran Key and uh, soon we will be able to confirm whether or not Neil learned his Duran Key from Asamites or some other otherworldly presence. Well, you can hand her over to me now because I'm taking custody of her. As Scourge, I have right of destruction over her and uh, uninvited kindred fall directly under my jurisdiction. I'm sure you already know that. Oh, I do. But I'm telling you, you can turn her over to me now. Uh, you are welcome to call your sheriff. Uh, in fact, there's no need for a middleman. Call your sheriff and have him contact me such as proper. And he kind of just turns away. I need a frenzy check. Do I actually do frenzy, make a frenzy check for that? Because I was going to banter more with him. He is specifically daring you to attack him, yes. Is he using a power to provoke me? He or? is doing something that falls under a frenzy check on the chart. Fair enough. Two successes. Three, because you have uh, yeah, the three. bonus from... Is it difficulty eight? Was that? Is difficulty eight? And normal? then drops down to okay, six. perfect. So three okay. successes. You're good. You're good. Hey, look here, asshole. Just because you got handed a position doesn't mean that you run things around here. The sheriff already sent me here. So hand me over the girl, or I can collect some more Nosferatu teeth. So here is how this is going to go. You are not going to interfere with the workings of this domain. I'm going to potent slam him in the face and knock his teeth out. Okay, that's just rounds of combat. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to interrupt him saying this is how this is going to go. Uh, initiative 19. Okay. Uh, at the top of the initiative is uh, one of the two Tremere that are with him. Oh. And they're going on a 23. They are the War Mage burns for celerity and will reach out to grab you. Okay. Uh, are you doing anything in response? Nope. They have six successes to grab you. I guess I'm grabbed. And then you will take three traits of blood from your pool. Okay. Um, and uh, the difficulty to resist frenzy increases by three. Uh, it is your turn. Okay, so I'm in a grapple. Yes. Meaning I cannot uh, throw the punch I intended to throw. Right, he's pulling you away, and you your your body like sizzles as uh, uh, your veins like blacken, and they're definitely using magic to rip blood from your body. In fact, uh, what they are doing is they are expending uh, those three successes towards blood rage are going to be used to make you suffer a massive nosebleed as you find yourself spending blood to blend in with humanity and like bleed. Johnny is going to reverse the grapple and basically announce, did Clan Tremere just attack the sheriff's office? So that's going to be a brawl plus strength. Yes, you had your Compo uh, five successes. Okay. Uh, are you reversing or breaking free? Um, I think maybe I'll just break free. Okay. Yeah. You push the little nerd off of you uh, pretty easily. <laughs> Yeah, and, and he's just kind of, kind of, he's he's gonna kind of basically uh, stop his combat pose, and just be like, "Did Clan Tremere just attack the sh a member of the sheriff's office?" You should probably call the sheriff and let him know. He kind of says like with an eye roll. Is anybody else taking any combat actions? Uh, when when you stop uh, taking aggressive actions, they just kind of hold, and they just kind of wait in a holding pattern for initiative to continue. What do any of the other Bruja members of the sheriff's office do? They look thrilled that you're frustrated like all of the people that used to be loyal to shaw feel like this is like justice for the whole satite thing okay it's like this group might have been handpicked well if you're not going to give me the girl then the rest of you can at least get the hell out of here the i know for a fact that you as the scourge do not have right to be just walking around in another kindred's domain that is actually specifically the part that a scourge is granted 
uh, kind of like smiles. Not not a not a, a kindred that's been given domain in this city. Actually, as a matter of fact, it is. Is it? Yeah, it's part of my job to quietly monitor the local kindred and ensure that they're not embracing people without permission. And you can just simply break domain that way. Yeah, well, well only the prince's domain actually matters. He kind of like you know relaxes and yeah, I actually have um, the exact power I need to do what I need to do here. And but what, it's okay. And what is it exactly that you need to do here? He kind of shrugs, whistles, and uh, kind of waves his index finger around. And the Bruja that used to be loyal to Shaw demonstrate their loyalty to this Nosferatu. And they collect uh, all of these strange red plants that they found, uh, Tupperware containers. And he drags their Setite, their Setite, their Asamite prisoner by her hair. And he starts walking out. I figure you might need some time to think, so we're going to clear out. But it's all right. You at least won your fight with my sire, right? And he just walks past. One of the Barak kind of turns around, points finger guns at Johnny, and he's like, Hey, man, heard about the Haven raid. Sorry about that. (laughs) All right, Johnny frenzies. All right. (laughs) I feel like in a frenzy, he's going to be going for the Nosferatu, though. Yeah, the, yeah the actual, the, the, the primogen scourge. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Bruja 1 is tied for 19. Bruja 2 is, uh, is at 14. Uh, so, what are you looking to do? He's going to try and grab the, the Nosferatu. Okay. Lex, let me know when either Kabir shows up or when Wynn can get involved in this. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Kabir is definitely on his way, but uh, things kind of... Things have gone sideways, before, yeah. but, but let me know if Wynn hears this if this is something she can intervene in any way i mean when definitely hears the the altercation that broke out and uh the cops are just kind of like nervously looking around hoping that things don't suddenly explode and then you hear it all explode so yeah if you want you can just roll initiative and and join in whenever works for you i'm going on a 14 when it comes up okay so who's taking priority over me and the Bruja I'm tied with? Uh, you. That's why I asked. Okay. Yeah. So he will gr- he will grab the uh I'll, I will split my action. Okay. Um, I will grab the uh the Nosferatu, um, and I will sink my teeth into him. Okay. Are you biting for damage or defeat? Oh, let's bite for damage. Okay. Uh, he's gonna dodge. I will spend a point of willpower. Six successes to grab. Uh, he will dodge you with six successes to dodge. Uh, the other Bruja is going to attempt to grapple. Yep. One success to grapple. Grappled. Win. Win is going to... God, this is not her forte. She is going to run in and she is going to grab Johnny. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a dex brawl. I'm not using claws, just for the record. Grab Johnny. <laughs> From the inside out. <laughs> it was like cat affection. Four successes. Okay. Uh, with four successes, uh, you wrap your arms around uh, Johnny. You can feel it is like it is like hugging a horse and trying to push it back when it really wants to go forward. Mm-hmm. No, I'm uh, anticipating going for a ride. Yes, yeah, so you're not. You're not sure how long you're going to hold on. Yeah. But for the moment, you grab Johnny, and she's just going to whisper, "Johnny, stop." The second Bruja, kind of like. Looks like he wants to like try to sucker punch you, but seems to kind of like back Reconsider. off. Yeah, <laughs> she's not focused on any other shithead except for the one in her coterie. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, end around basically the uh, Bruhar kind of like they put their hands up, not really wanting to tussle with two members of the coterie, mm. but there is still a raging Johnny that may yep. not let them leave. Yep. Uh, so why don't we start with, uh, Johnny, you're currently in a grapple, uh, so you would have to break out of, um, being held. And she just keeps whispering, Johnny, please stop. Johnny, is it just, is it just when grappling me or is it both her and the Bruja? Uh, when, when Wynn grabs you, yeah, they back off. Okay. They're like, you know, willing to be tough when they have like the numbers advantage, but like if they don't, they kind of, when you're Bruja, you're probably going to control the fight. But the moment you don't, you're just dead. So <laughs> it's and probably not worth the risk. They don't know that I'm not above using claws on 
Oh, they're Camerians? Um, no, they actually specifically <laughs> seem to think you're not above using closet <laughs> yeah. camera lids. Uh, largely based on the last gangrel primogen who just never showed up one day. Um, so he will uh, try to take two actions. He'll try to throw her off so that he can once again reestablish grapple on the, uh, the NOS. Okay. Five successes to break out of the grapple. All right. I got three successes and three ones. <sighs> that, like, overpowering that you sensed was about to happen, happens. And uh, you do not hold on to the bull as it goes forward. Is he still able to be, uh, is Johnny able, still able to, to clear distance to grab him? Or is that going to be, clearing the distance going to be his other half of the action? Uh, do you have leaps and bounds? I do have leaps and bounds. So then no. Okay. <laughs> uh, only two successes this time. Uh, he will weave out of the way. Enough successes to dodge out. Yeah, he has five successes to weave out of the way. One of the, the first of the barrage is going to hold his action. He's like, you, you need to get your friend under control. He's freaking out. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Captain Obvious. Uh, Wynn, it is your go. Oh, we're going to do a thing Wynn is not at all good at. Wynn puts herself in Johnny's path and glares him in the eyes. And says, you do not scare me, Johnny Saxon. Stand the fuck down. And she's going to attempt to intimidate him. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a uh, your charisma and intimidation versus Johnny's willpower. Is that the difficulty or am I rolling willpower? You are rolling willpower in a contested roll. Current willpower? Uh, you are rolling your total willpower in a contested roll. I am spending a willpower. Okay. What a time to roll poorly. One success. <laughs> Don't roll ones. Two successes. Okay. Three. <laughs> Three counting the willpower. Hell yeah. Johnny? Yeah. Um, the beast is very difficult to frighten, but you are given just this moment of clarity with your friend kind of becoming the focus of your frenzy now and offering a moment of clarity where you can kind of see her trying to like cow your beast. You may spend a point of willpower and roll self-control. Johnny will, uh, he will roll self-control to try and actually break out of the, uh, out of the frenzy then, since he really doesn't want to destroy Wynn. I will spend a, uh, point of willpower to make the roll, and I'll spend a further point of willpower to make sure I have a success, because I don't think I'm going to roll a 10. Yeah, no, no 10s, but the point of willpower will give me one success. Okay, so what this means is, for the round, you are in control of your actions. You are still in frenzy, which means that in order to end the frenzy, the subject of your frenzy needs to be, be outside of your awareness. When you need to leave, just leave me in here. Johnny holds his beast, but it's very clear that he's wrestling with it right now. I'm proud of you, Johnny. And she gets outside. Okay. The door to the pawn shop is shut, and Johnny begins to come to... Alone in this, like, dark, trashed pawn shop. Wynne kind of stands outside, patting her pockets for a cigarette. She doesn't find any. She has half a broken joint, but nothing that she could actually smoke at the moment. The, uh, there's a woman that is brought out by the Nosferatu. She's kind of stuffed into the back seat of a squad car. And in the trunk, they lay out all this, like, pieces of Tupperware and, like, potted odd plants. And they close the trunk of the squad car. And police officer kind of gets into the driver's seat. One of the Tremir gets into the passenger seat. And the squad car takes off. Shortly thereafter, you kind of start seeing, like, all the kindred presence at this, like, vandalism crime scene start to fade away. What is the plate number of the car? Oh, uh, you take it down. Just okay. fine. When feeling helpless once again, just like she did when Reese had Joey. There's so much she can do, but there's so little that's applicable in this situation. She waits for Johnny or Kabir, whoever's going to show up first. Uh, Kabir shows up pretty quickly. You can actually see him kind of like arriving just as the squad car starting to leave. Hey. Is something wrong? Yeah, a lot's wrong. What can I do to help you? Can you make that sc cop car think it's going somewhere else? Is there anyone in that car you care about? There's a woman in there. If you can keep her alive, do it. Well, I'm sure she buckled up. And 
Spend for the whole pack. Oh man, those are the car full of people without fortitude. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? Why is there so many noises? Uh, <laughs> you hear the uh, the car swerves, attempting to avoid this like bus full of like children who are like laughing and like having a great time, and it smashes straight into a telephone pole. My love, I give you squad car. Are there any other services you need? Where's Johnny? He kind of like looks around. Johnny's having a hard night. He'll be out in a few minutes. You know what, Kabir? Yeah, there are a lot of services from you that I need. Perhaps but- your night may yet improve. How may I help you, my dove? Nothing right now. What about Johnny? Johnny comes out from the uh, inside the pawn shop smoking a cigarette. I- Before he comes out, Wynn's just like, if you promise not to make it weird, can I have a hug? He looks like he's not sure if he can keep the promise, but he fucking goes for it, and he hugs you. She just kind of squeezes like she's not, sh- like she's trying to hold on to the situation itself. You are very strong. Yeah, I know. Sorry. No, 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 it's okay. Uh, Johnny comes out to see the two of them hugging. Gives a pause, then just kind of walks past. He puts his hands up and takes a step back. Johnny, I know you're very upset, but- He pats, he pats Kabir on the back and just kind of walks past him. Who fucked with you? Did you do that? He yeah, points around uh, the, at the squad car. No. Faith is on your side, my friend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, admit, I admit to nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> is there any... Um, fuck it. John, I mean, Johnny's going to rush over there and see if he can uh, get the the uh, the Asamite out of the back of the, of the car. Before uh, anybody else gets up out of there. You can kind of see the Tremere, like, stirring and, like, gripping the side of his head, who did not wear a seatbelt. <laughs> and in the back seat, like, kind of, like, tapping at the glass is the woman that you attempted to rescue earlier. Uh, there is a locked back door, though. Um, is the Tremere getting out of the car? Yeah, he does not know where he is yet, but is probably going to get out of the car momentarily. Okay, cool. Well, um... Kabir, can you Fuck. make them feel like they've shit their pants? Fucking nobody's watching, right? My dove. Just something to distract them. It doesn't have to be that. I can make them feel like they are the shit coming out of their own pants. <laughs> For you. Um. <laughs> I don't even. Wow, you have a way with words. This is the truest love. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to roll damage this whole scene, so I'm gonna just fucking knock this Tremere out. <laughs> yeah, got it. I... <laughs> Jesus. Are you... Nope, nope. Waiting? Chaos is how they work. <laughs> we are... We woke Rin up and today Johnny and chose can never chaos. go on a mission together again. Ever. <laughs> no, no, it worked out. It's fine. They called in backup, which is exactly what I they needed. I will have you know that every mission they go on in season two, there has been carnage. <laughs> and Kabir comes out and helps. Uh, six successes to hit him. Uh, success. You actually oh. get a plus two because you're, like, behind him. And I actually forgot to roll my celerity. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I rolled two more ones, only uh, um, only seven successes to hit him. Okay. Uh, six will carry over into damage. I'll spend a point of bl- uh, blood for potence. Johnny, don't kill him. If he dies from a punch, he deserves to die. <laughs> <laughs> only seven levels of damage. Okay. He is two successes on soak, five roll over, and you thump in the back of the head. His face smashes into, like, where the, the dashboard area is, and the airbag goes off. Um, he reaches around and unlocks the door for the back for the uh, for where the woman is. Okay. Uh, she uh, is a little kind of, like, frightened and out of it. It looks like she wants to go with you, but does not possess the strength of will to kind of, like take the make the act of getting out of the car and going with you so you kind of have to like i reach in and grab her and pull her out in yeah front of me. my name is johnny i'm a friend of neil's that's win that's kabir they're also friends would you like to come with me i would like that very much kabir do you have wheels yes of course my friend come to my van we will leave together we'll take oh, your vehicle Jesus. out of here and he leads you to this like gaudy van that has frankly unrealistic amount of detail on the like ridiculous fucking decals and like painted animals and like there's like a seagull that's there with like big old eyes and inside there's like a collection of like gold chains that hang from underneath the mirror 
please, this way. He opens the door and kind of like gives like a bowing gesture, extending his hand uh, towards uh, Wynne to help her into the van. Fuck okay, it. Wynne just takes the hand, uses it to help her up into the van. She doesn't need to. I she will just take kind you of wants- to what, were the? I'm sorry. Did the uh, did the, the plants all go in the squad car as well? They are in the trunk. Um, Johnny- uh, Wynne, Wynne, Wynne would have seen that happen. Uh, while he's gathering up the woman, she gathers up the plants. Perfect. I will frisk the Tremere's pockets to see if there's any other evidence in there. I uh, there is. Uh, there are like these little bags of like rolled up Caliph that have been kind of like absconded with by the Tremere. Well, that will go in Johnny's pockets, and uh, they will abscond away into Kabir's van. <sighs> okay, we've touched a butt here. So what are we going to do now? I was thinking we might be able to uh, rendezvous at my place, gather our thoughts, and... It's not a bad idea, Kabir. time together. Just so you know, the new scourge of the city is a Nosferatu that has no love for me and would probably love to lash out at my friends. So you need to be extra careful as you're, as you're fucking around here. You have a Nosferatu scourge? Yes. Yeah. This is not good for my business. Shaw's kid. I will just kill him. Like we did his pie. Like kind of like <laughs> punches your arms like a little bit. <laughs> Kabir, keeping it real. (laughs) Yeah, it's done us a world of good. That's only because you haven't gotten the job done yet. Kill this motherfucker and I can go back to business. And also, Wynn would be much happier and Cordery would no doubt be much happier. Yeah, yeah. All right, so now we have... I'm I'm sorry, ma'am, what's your name? Nara. All right, now we have Nara, who we've just taken from the Scourge. She kind of like shifts away from the Ravnos, figuring out what the fuck he is. <laughs> well, we took we took him from the uh, from the Tremere, to be fair. But point taken, we are messing with the Scourge at this point. A Scourge who, as you've said, has no love for you or probably me. <sighs> this is the guy you a- who was asking about me and what I did with Shaw. Yep. Well, I can only think of one one direction that that relationship's going to go into. All right. Well, let's. Kabir, you get us to your place and we'll, uh... I don't think that's a good idea. No? No. If he's a Nosferatu, he'll figure out where Kabir lives if we go there. We could leave... Mm -hmm. We could leave the city. What about the Anarchs? That's kind of what I was thinking. I know that they're having a lot of problems with the Setites uh, lately, though. Wouldn't it be handy if we gave them some help? Tell you what, I'm going to call the old man. I think he's currently hanging out amongst the Anarchs. And if not, he'll know a good place to go. I like that idea. Can I borrow your phone? Will I get it back? Uh, I think so. Okay. And Wynn hands her phone over to Johnny. Johnny will call Weathers. Miles, better. You make your way to where a number of very nervous kindred who are kind of, it's kind of evident that they are frightened of Neil. And Upton is visibly pacing. When he sees Miles, he is immediately like, oh, thank goodness, Miles. The sheriff is needed. Where were you? I was dealing with the matter at home. I came as soon as I heard. Oh, thank goodness. Um, the Seneschal attempted to place a call to you. We didn't get an answer. We were very concerned that Neil or Bisson had gotten to you. There was a mishap with my phone. Oh, well. That's the only reason why I did not answer the summons of the court at first. Very good. May we talk without... So you can get me up to date without giving more panic to the court? Yes. Uh, There are a handful of matters of politics that we must resolve uh, right away. He gives gives Britta this, like, dirty fucking glare. She looks dismayed. (laughs) And looks back at... Miles, I understand things have been very difficult for you, but together, Miles, we will maintain my throne. Let's go. He follows along with him. When you go into the other room, he kind of gives you a hug. I'm a little taken aback, but I return it. Uh Miles, I need your help. Um, I understand that your friend needs to die, but he is an infiltrator against your quarry, and I'm going to take care of you. But there are more important matters at hand. 
I mean, that's one of the, the factors. The Prince of Boston wrote me a letter indicating that he has given acknowledgement to an asset of our corn. And everyone now knows that he has done this. The wolves are at our door, Miles. <laughs> I mean, we should stop and look at it. I We understand that. But he is a Mulcavian. Yes, I know. Do I mean, how understand? much... I mean, the only way to do it is if you decide to... Miles, were you about to say how much damage can a Malkavian do when we just had to dispatch half the court to detain the Asamite Malkavian who has returned to this domain, no doubt, to consume our very souls? Okay, they're two separate things, but I do... His I, hug is, like, very tight at that point, but he eventually <laughs> lets go. Thank you, Prince. But, one, we could just acknowledge her and pretend that whatever he said didn't matter. What? Miles, everyone knows. They all look at me like I am some buffoon. And that's why we can go around and pretend that what this Mulcavian did didn't matter. No, it mattered. I read the letter myself. And ever since I couldn't stop thinking of the damned letter. But how many other people know that? Have you told anyone? Yes, of course. I told everyone as soon as I got here. And I warned them to not speak of it or I will bloodhunt them. Very good. So... We can handle this. And what exactly will we do if Britta attempts to take the throne she's, now that she has been acknowledged by another prince? She's not going to. Miles, my, you were the only one who I thought might understand me. I do, and my coterie is loyal. You are, If you are not doing what I want you to do, Miles, you are clearly not understanding me. What did you want me to do? I want you to obviously go kill this imposter of Neil, go kill Britta, go warn the rest of the domain that they're never to speak of this again, and kill them if they do. Prince, don't you think this might be a tax from Pendragon to weaken our domain? Yes, and I will not stand for it. Wipe them out. I, the attacks are specifically made to weaken a court by wiping yes, them Yes, I understand what you're saying, Miles. Wipe them out. Can we take a breath? He takes a breath and he starts pacing. And, like, you can kind of see, like, bloody tears welling up in his eyes. I believe the wolves be- are at our door, Miles. Why do you not see that? I believe you may be under the effects of something that was on that letter. Yes, Miles. I am deeply offended by the ink that was applied to that letter by my nemesis. We must begin the killing. Purge. These actions will do nothing besides give the domain to Pendragon. Miles, listen to me. All right. I'm I'm going to say this as slowly as possible so that you can understand what I'm saying. I received word from my contacts, Mm -hmm. my spies. I have spies everywhere, Miles. I know everything. Mm -hmm. And those spies informed me that the Tremere discovered that Neil is capable of blasphemous Asamite diablerie magic. And... It became quite evident that the Neil that returned to New York was in fact not Neil, and it was in fact his sire who practices these filthy magics. So I dispatched everyone I could to get rid of him and deal with all of these problems, because I will not have them, Miles. I cannot have these problems. I am in the midst of so much politics right now, you cannot begin to understand my problems. You're correct. I cannot begin to understand your problems, but I Thank wish, you for understanding, Miles. I wish you had come to me as a fellow venture, and I knew that I did... That is what we are doing. You have right, the be- iron circlet. Right. Before you had started dispatching these things, because... I gave you that badge. I am here. And you are call. my sheriff. I am here. But who gave you that information? It wasn't just your spies that had made all those determinations. It was absolutely my spies. Was it also possibly coming through Reese? Reese is the one who maintains my spies. <laughs> right. What a stupid question. You're correct. I did not have that information. Well, now you know. But So now you know that the information is completely legitimate praxis, and we must act. Since you're the attempt at taking your throne, Reese has been doing more and more and more. Mouse, he said he's not going to do that anymore. But he is making all of the phone calls to me from you. Yes, I ask him to make phone... I I don't understand phones. I make him do all of my phone calls. You and some, sometimes he dials for me and passes it over when I wish to exert my authority. But 
Otherwise, yes, of course, I have reason to everything. And all of these actions, he is taking away from your grandeur. He is undermining your domain by using your name. Miles. I need you to understand me. I need you to understand me. All right. He would not do that. We are friends. If you were friends, he wouldn't hold a boon over you. Well, why not? Because that's not how friends operate. Okay. Have you ever done anything where he, he is threatened to take use that boon instead of doing what you wanted? Miles, boons are exactly how I made most of my friends. Well, Prince, you we don't have a boon between us. You're right. He kind of like narrows his eyes. But we are friends. I am here, and I have saved your throne. You are my most willing killer. And I admire that in you. I have done a lot for this domain besides Thank kill. Thank you. Britta must die. Continuing down this road will just lead to disaster. Fine. Then I'll fix it another way. Miles, why don't you go take care of the Asamite perverse, Malkavian convert, probably actually an Asamite, and I will take care of Britta. Are you not willing to listen to me? I have listened to you. I thought we just came to an agreement. No, you've said things and then made... Fine, Miles. Say what you think we should do instead of me. I am offering suggestions. As venture to venture, should we not be listening and coming together to... Promote ourselves and the clan above all else. Miles. What? Cousin, I implore thy aid. Oh, shit. The wolves are at the door. You must secure my domain. Any way possible? Why are you asking me that? He kind of, like, shifts. Like, his demeanor changing the moment he realized he never had boons on you? Because your domain is an assault from things you're not seeming to believe when I tell you. So what use is my help if you don't listen to the things that I'm trying to help you with? Well, perhaps if you worked on things that you weren't just clearly obsessed with in conspiracy theories, we'd be able to get more done. (laughs) He, like, sasses you. At this point, it's it's incredibly clear that, though Upton was always kind of, like, not all there, this dude is not here tonight. (laughs) Is there anything I can do about that? Well, you don't want to kill... Oh, oh, uh, to help his mind? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, you're, I mean, it dep- you're not entirely sure. Um, Unfortunately, there's probably one dude in the coterie who might be able to help with something like that, and he's bound in irons in a closet. No, you can't just punch him. <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you I can. I just that. slap the stupid different. right out. How dare you? Miles, we have known each other for a long time. I'm not going to kill Britta for you. But I need you to go out there and make sure everyone respects me. And also, I need it to be figured out whether or not this impersonator, who is, let's be honest, Nip Miles, he is very likely an impersonator. We need to verify that he is, in fact, not an impersonator. And if he is an impersonator, and again, Miles, he is very likely to be an impersonator, I give you the right of Amaranth. Destroy him utterly. Teach those Asamites a lesson. I think I can do these things for you. Thank you. I need to go to a meeting uh, because I I was told by Elsa that she has an urgent meeting with me that she needs to do and has some important news. Um, so if you will excuse me, I must wait for her. Also, before you go, he approaches his desk, opens his drawer, and sets out a, like, small glass, probably crystal, actually, like, container mm. of perfume. I was thinking I might offer this to Elsa. What do you think of it? I take a look at it and examine it with my... It's kind of gaudy, but a lot of diamonds and <laughs> crystal. So it's acceptable, but it's definitely his style. Yeah, I mean, she'll, she will probably smile and nod, but she's not getting entranced by it. Right. I believe it is an excellent representation of your intentions. <laughs> excellent. This is why you work for me, Miles. Now go enforce my will. And again. Is there any way we can hold off on any judgments since until at least maybe tomorrow night? Just to make sure. There's no reason to weaken the domain. We're vampires. We have all the time. Hmm. 
But that, would that make me seem weak and indecisive? No, you're looking into matters. You're making sure that your domain and your people are taken care of without needless accusations. <laughs> I like that. Make them think I'm taking care of them. Go forth, Miles. Your grace. Uh, but I'm. we're definitely going to kill him tomorrow. Well, we're going to kill an impersonator tomorrow. Yes. There you go. Good. Announce that too. And he kind of like goes off to find Elsa. Meanwhile. Britta is looking for Elsa, but I'm not sure if she's findable considering everything that was just said. Uh, Elsa is in no rush to meet the prince. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) She sort of uh, sits, she relaxes, Mm -hmm. she is accompanied by a throng of other Toreador Mm -hmm. who are kind of like, clearly, most of those Toreador are very nervous about Mm -hmm. what Neil, like the horrors Neil is going to do to them if he gets free. Yeah. But uh, Elsa seems relaxed. And when you approach, she kind of pats the seat next to her, and she begins talking about music that she wrote quite some time ago that she thinks you would appreciate and begins to kind of explain that she would like you to learn some of the sheet music that she has prepared and in reality she talks to you about something totally different Mm -hmm. and what she says to you is i'm becoming less confident that your quarterly is genuinely interested in helping myself weathers and Many of the others who stuck our necks out for you. And I am not going to tolerate being pushed again. So I hope you understand why I require this demonstration of humility. Britta sits delicately in the spot exactly as she's indicated to. And when she sits, she mirrors Elsa's posture. Say if Elsa has her ankles crossed, Britta will do so too. She sits with the attentiveness of a student, but is her head is tilted as she's understanding the true message that she's receiving. She picks her words carefully. I understand. I'm sorry that I'm still a student. The mistakes that I make, I... You don't deserve them. And I apologize for them. She's clearly picking her words to talk, like, past the crowd. And to speak vaguely. And if myself and another could benefit from what you have to teach, from the help that you've given, you deserve that confidence. I've seen the ways that you've helped us. I helped me. And you shouldn't have to feel like it's a stretch. I respect what you could teach there's a nod of understanding one of the other children kind of gives you this big hug and she's like you've been through so much britta does hug back she's a little reserved uh she's looking down and her posture remains very demure uh very submissive not quite looking at the other toreador but looking devoting all of her attention in this moment to elsa uh, when anyone else intervenes, she maintains, like, in every element, like, her body faces towards Elsa, uh, that thing where her knees are pointed towards her as she speaks, and when the hug is through, she remains, like, in that submissive posture. I'm going to help you, and I'm going to do two things. One, I am going to have Neil turned over to the Toreador. As of right now, His Grace has agreed that the Tremere will oversee verification as to whether or not he is who they are concerned he is, and whether or not he is a practitioner of rogue blood magic. I have enough sway to have him brought to me instead. What I do not have is the ability to ensure that he will be found innocent. But I can prevent the Tremere from sabotaging any hopes of proving such. I will meet with his grace. And I will also ensure that your quarterly has the opportunity to prove his innocence before any judgment is made. Now, 
I wish for you. And she holds her hand out and someone else presents her with this like very like well crafted book. How well crafted? Uh, not so well crafted that you are uh, <laughs> enchanted, almost like specifically so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and she opens the book and she sets the book down on your lap. And what you see is this like running list of boons and transactions. She hands you the pen. And she says, has your quarter made up their minds as to who will offer these boons to me? The other Toreador is still paying attention. Unclear. Yeah, they are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do they still appear to be hearing music, however? Yes. Okay. Britta supports the book in her lap and will accept the pen. And she looks down into the book with all the boons. And she says, are you sure this is what you'd want? I am sure. I am sure that this is not what I want, but it is what I need. I cannot have anyone stepping on me if I am to maintain the power that I have here. Intended or not, your quarry undermined me, and I can never allow that to happen again. If you can undermine me, my enemies can. And if there was another way that you would know that I would appreciate your tutelage? And Britta lets her eyes drop to her own wrist, and then to Elsa's. She considers, I would need to know that you are worth the investment. She says, almost like apologizing for having to say such. So I want an apology for Miles, too. Said out here, in the Elysium, so that my rivals may hear it. I'm not certain if I'll be able to get it. What would you like in the meantime? The boons. Okay. Give me the boons, and should you accomplish this, I will release my hold of them. And with that, Britta writes her own and Neil's name down for two life boons. She kind of gives you a look. We are unsure whether or not Neil is Neil. Any prestation debts uh, he has cannot be cleared as of yet. And he cannot create prestation debts. I hope someone else was understanding. If I write down another name, and when Neil is proven innocent, could that name be switched back? If he is proven innocent, the boon he has on me maintains... And he may use it as he sees fit. Okay. And Britta writes down Wynne's name. She closes the book very, like, gingerly with you and rests her hand over yours. Mm -hmm. And there's this kiss on your cheek. That was very brave of you. After some time, Niels finds himself alone with a pair of Tremere that kind of pace around the room, arms crossed and just kind of fixing mean stares. You're still shackled up. There's a piece in your mouth preventing you from speaking and it looks like they have put significant effort into making sure that you cannot cast your magic. And then the door opens. Reese enters. He carries with him a suitcase which is set down on a table that's, you know, some five, ten feet away from you. And then he paces for a little while with his Tremere, and they they tell him in Latin that you have made... Oh, do, you, do you speak Latin? I do not speak okay. Latin. They speak amongst themselves in Latin. And then uh, with a gesture, he dismisses the two Tremere from the room. They leave. Reese pulls up a seat. He sits down with a casual gesture. The piece of metal kind of like locking your jaw in place melts into an ooze that tastes like bile, but you find you can speak. <laughs> Neil sort of spits some of the like gross just leavings of his uh, of his summoning out of his mouth, then looks up at Reese and he is quite clearly just absolutely terrified right now. But in that way, he's gotten a couple times before where he just, like, there's no hope of getting out of this. And so he's scared, but 
accepting, maybe maybe not as cowed as Reese might expect. And he just looks up at Reese. Um, good evening, Mr. Reese. Good evening, Neil. I understand that you have found yourself in a bit of a pickle. Found myself here is, is one way to put it. He says, and he's just continuing to sort of affix that Malkavian gaze on Reese. I imagine it is a rather appropriate term for it. You are here because of the sum of your actions and the actions of others. Surely even you did not predict that you would be here tonight. No. No. Um, I feel kind of stupid about that. Maybe I should have. As, uh, as soon as I saw the pieces moving around the board, I should have seen some of the other ones coming. That's, uh, that's probably on me. Don't be so harsh on yourself, Neil. You are only now being introduced to a jahan that has existed for millennia. You lack the scope to understand what you are looking at. Neil gets this very weird look on his face when Reese talks about scope and gives like a nervous giggle, like a like a nervous laugh that's almost but not quite mocking. Does something amuse you, Neil? Just talking about um scope uh i i I just it's um it's you're right i've only started really seeing scope recently uh the the much larger pictures and i i i don't know the answer to this question but i'm i'm really wondering of the two people in this room which one of us has the narrower scope right now if you're pondering this you have made yet another mistake. Now as for the minor things, do you understand why it is that your coterie has suffered as it has? Yes. Tell me. I mean, I, I think so. It's always really hard for me to start thinking in, in sort of like absolutes. There's a, there's a million little things that might have led to this moment. My guess uh, at first uh, if I was going to put my best guess on it, is uh, you. Me. Going back a little bit of a ways. Um, actions that were undertaken uh, by us, by Miles, that you took umbrage with um, as you're sort of moving about. Yeah. I, I'm curious. Um, I'm curious how far down the road you thought about uh, the repercussions of everything that's going on. The repercussions of my actions? Kind of. Is that what you think you should be considering at a time like this? I... We both know I'm not what the rumors say that I am. Who they say that I am. You are the shadow of what the rumors say that you are. You have all of the makings, all of the reasoning to become, and, of course, the necessary training. The truth is that the difference between you and your sire is a matter of experience. And temperament, and personality, and thought. All of those things are quite unreliable when it comes to the Malkavians, aren't they? No. Have you not spent much time around your clan? Everything that every member of my clan does, they do for a reason, and I think that's sort of the thing that people forget yes, a lot. But perhaps you do not understand how much your sire may act through you. How much your choices may not be truly your choices at all. I mean, if we're going to debate free will, I... Yeah, it's possible. It is in the nature of Tremere to debate free will. Okay. Um, you were saying something about why this is happening? That's correct, Neil. He... His hands are still bound, but he does, like, a... He, like, nods his head a little bit in a... Please, continue to monologue at me. Like, gesture. Where is the piece of the Book of Nod? 
Neil goes real quiet for a second. Ah, perhaps you don't want me to monologue, and perhaps you should speak instead. Why are you interested in things like that? Do you believe yourself in a position to ask me questions? I think that I'm in a position where I can't help but to always ask questions. And then a change of subject. The woman that was found at your haven. She is here in violation of hospitality and is to meet final death. Shall we speak of her instead? The thing that I'm having a lot of trouble trying to figure out is what your endgame here is. Outside of petty vengeance. You struggle to understand because you lack scope. I've already told you as much. Yeah. So I'm not going to waste my time attempting to expand your mind. Because I I see a path here. And, and it doesn't... The, the path that I see, it ends badly for you, for the domain, for the Northeast. I, I see all of that, and I, I can't... I can't see... Uh, maybe I am too narrow in scope. I, I can't see past a path that doesn't go well for anyone. Y- you, first and foremost. I, well, and Neil's face, he like he looks like he's actually considering it. Like he like he does not get it and is trying to piece it together. Sort of in spite of himself, there's this little puzzle in front of him that. Like, he's literally in a position where he could die at any second. And it's like, yeah, but the puzzle, though. Like, what's... Mm-hmm. I don't know. And he's not even quite looking at Reese at this point. He's sort of, like, staring into the middle of the distance, like, trying to piece things together. Because what I see, right, if, if I wanted the easiest thing in the world, and the thing that... The Sabbat are here. And they're coming. And everybody is factionalizing off. Inside the Camarilla, they're already split. And there's the Gemini League, and there's Pendragon's army. And I know which side that you fall on, and based on our actions, every action we've taken, you have to know which side that we we fall on. Which is your side, which is a much smaller side than the other side. And it would be so easy to just... I mean, the ties to Pendragon are already there, and between Pendragon and the army, the Gemini League, like in the Sabbat, the, the Gemini League doesn't, but we're making the choices for here anyways, and one of the major reasons that we're doing that is, is Miles and, and just the Coterie in general. We, we, we have thrown our lot in to help you, and so by doing this, I, I can't see how you're not just undermining some of the only actual allies in the area who who have been able to accomplish anything for you can actually do. And if I wanted to kill you, I would kill me. That's like the easiest answer there. Like if you can't just see the ripples of how every single one of them act after that, even if you've destroyed them, like I, I just, I don't know. I don't understand what your end game here is. I don't understand how you can't see the value that each of us has outside of the fact that it might not matter to you uh which means you have something else some other goal and like that's other than survival other than the continuation of the gemini league or or the camarilla or other than the overthrow of the sabbat and that's that's the part that that I, i can't quite put my mind to it's the piece that's missing or maybe i have it already and i i just don't know because sometimes i when you have a box full of puzzle pieces to, to like three or four or five different puzzles uh, and he just like keeps rambling as his like thought your quarry do you truly believe that you are some benevolent force who should simply be taken at face value no I think we should be judged on the choices we've made and continue to make. Well, possession of the Book of Nod is a death sentence among the Camarilla. So I've heard. Your mm-hmm. rogue thaumaturgy makes you fair game to Ultramere. So if we're discussing face value, we kill you here in this room. We ask Britta to come give her account of what happened, but we kill her. We have Britta call Johnny for help, and he comes rushing over, and we kill him. And after that, Miles falls apart, again, and Wynn just leaves. And then what happens after that? 
we move on. You're not the first coterie like this. You're not the first group who thought they had connections that would bring down the wrath of heaven on anyone that I'm hunted and killed them. not saying that we are, but after that, the Sabbat are in the city, and they're coming, and Pendragon is nipping at your heels, and I'm not saying we're special. I'm saying that... All right, Neil, before you go wandering off in this conversation again, understand that the board is bigger than you think. I know. So stop dwelling on that. I don't Where want to is see the trees The Book of Nod. Where is it? Where is Johnny's child? What makes you think I would know those things? Where is Johnny's sire? I don't know the answers to your questions. You know, I've been out of the city for a while, for some reason. And he gives Reese like a, not accusatory, but sort of a, just like, come on, man. Like, I haven't even been here, and you know why I haven't been here. How can I answer these questions? He knocks on the door. Activate the ritual. You feel a presence within the room, and you know now that should you begin to answer any question, you will be forced to answer answer truthfully, and you are not even capable of lies of omission. It is an agonizing experience. What do you know of your sire? On July 20th, 1969, he approached me outside of a high school in New Haven, said it was an auspicious night, and embraced me while I was trying to use a stolen cell telescope to look for the men who had landed on the moon. He brought me to New Haven. Uh, eventually, he started talking about things I didn't understand, and he never explained, like the get of Cain. He got very obsessed with uh, the concepts of justice, and then he fled to Alamot, leaving the Camarilla. Have you seen Nosai since? No. Hmm. Tell me of your fragment of the Book of Nod. It was in possession of Vito Santosa. It was given to him, presumably by his contacts within the Sabbat, to help, as far as I understand, Shaw and the Web as larger pieces of information gathering. Shaw used Vito as part of the Web of information for the Nosferatu. It was recovered by us the night that the assault on the Elysium took place and Arabella Rollins's attempted praxis in the kerfuffle as part of it. I had made photocopies of the fragment in order to use them to uh, prove to the domain that Shaw had been in possession of them. After that, I'm not entirely sure what happened to everything because that night uh, uh, started a long period of time where I was no longer in the domain. The first time that I had returned to my haven in forever was uh, just the other night. What do you know of Britta and where she comes from? What happens if I try not to answer? Do you try not to answer? Yes. You are racked with pain and then your mouth starts moving, giving the answer. Uh, um, I know that she doesn't know who she is. That none of us do. We don't know who our, her sire is. Uh, and it was curious to me that you didn't check. Um, because presumably that is the sort of thing that the Tremere can do. Uh, I know that mm, the few fragments of memory that she does have uh, are in black and white. Black and white? Like an old movie. I see. Neo. Yeah. Is there anything about you that you don't want me to know? I I don't want you to know that I have been practicing the art of mastery of heaven and earth for the last 20 years, figuring it out on my own. I don't want you to know that I made a pact with a demon in order to save my friends, that I outwitted it, that I am more than you think that I am. I don't want you to know that I still have personal connections to the children of Hakim uh, that are there. I don't want you to know because it would tell you that I am 
connected in some ways to the children of Hakim, not in the ways that you think, but enough ways for you to bury me that I am currently being pursued by members of the Web of Knives who are already in the city coming to kill me. I don't want you to know the that stops. I used to fear you the most, and now I don't. He answers on his own. The door opens, and Elsa Linden strolls into the room accompanied by a handful of Toreador. Reese kind of, like, turns and looks at Elsa, who has just, like, who has arrived, uh, like, on a horse made from serendipity. And... (laughs) (laughs) What a fucking line. Oh, man. And very kind of, like, casually and cordially nods to you. And she kind of takes out this, like, this very, like, pretty silk-like handkerchief. And she actually kind of, like, wipes some of, like... The black ooze that's like smeared across your mouth from you and kind of rest the handkerchief on your lap so you can kind of finish on your own when once you're unshackled and uh she turns to reese and begins to speak french do you speak french i do not okay the only thing that is clear about the conversation that the two of them have is that there comes a moment where reese goes very quiet he's very rigid he slaps the table with his hand, uh, like having like this physical outburst. Interestingly, the table cracks. <laughs> hmm. And he gets up and he walks out. At the door, on the other side of the door is the same Tremere that we're watching over you, kind of giving like confused and apologetic looks to Reese and unsure of what, what's happening. And then they just like little good ducklings, they get right behind him and the train of Tremere leave. And then Elsa shuts the door. One of the Torridor heads over and they've got like a couple of like these pins in their mouth and they kind of start like fucking with the locks and they pop the shackles that you're in and they kind of take that and they set it on the table and Elsa kind of like looks away and gestures for you to clean off your disgusting mouth. (laughs) And... Well, I hope he treated you well. Um, honestly, uh, about as expected. Maybe a little better. What did you learn from him? That he believes that he has much bigger games that he's playing, that he has plans to destroy the entire coterie that he has attempted to enact, that he is looking for the Book of Nod Neil is just like in a weird truth telling mood anyways now that he's here. He can't be stopped now and just uh the also the weird sense of relief. Do you smoke, Neil? Um I I I don't really know how to answer that question. Well <laughs> I heard a rumor that you do. And while well, I do not have your favorite brand on hand, as one of the Tory are kinda like takes out a cigarette and sets it down on the table for you. Neil not used to be the one receiving cigarettes instead of giving them, just sort of picks it up and, uh, um, th- thank you. My friends are going to be taking care of you until it is time that you come before the prince and speak. Okay. I understand that you have uh, a relationship of sorts with the Asamites. Yes. I see. Not the one that they think I have, though. I, I'm not a. I'm not a killer. Okay, then who? Who what? Which Asamites do you have a relationship with? Um, uh, they're a band of assassins. So which assassin is your friend? Not all of them. There's a. Uh, it's it's complicated. I see. Well, I gave you a cigarette for a reason. Take your time. I'm not here to interrogate you. So if you don't feel like you should share, by all means, don't. But I can only help you with what I know. I, there are Asimites, there are children of Hakim that I have personal relationships with from a long time ago. And then there are other ones who are currently in the process of hunting me down to drag me to Olamut or kill me. I'm not really sure which one. Why? Because they want to know what I know. I see. I have your cigarette. Prepare yourself for what is likely to be a very one-sided conversation. What do I do? Well, 
Had you asked me that question some time ago, I would have told you to find a political power, attach yourself to it, be loyal to it, and do not run off half-cocked into some of the most dangerous things that plague this region. But we're a bit past that conversation, aren't we? I think a little bit. So for now, I will tell you what I told you. Smoke your cigarette, clear your mind, and get ready for a harrowing evening. Thank you. Don't be ridiculous. I didn't do this for you. She just kind of walks out and shuts the door. Uh, the Toreador kind of hang out with you, and uh, they mostly talk to each other. And you start to kind of get the feeling that, like, what conversations they do have with you, they're, like, laughing at weird times and <laughs> are not overly invested in the actual conversation itself, but rather some sort of subtext. Um, I don't suppose anybody has a light. Clink. I Snap. That conversation. I thought about it. <laughs> I thought about it, but then I realized I, Neil doesn't want to know. <laughs> no, but you know the moments to laugh at. Laugh now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just give them the impression that I can hear them. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, yeah, and Neil just sits and kind of quietly smokes a cigarette and tries to calm down as much as he's ever capable of calming down. Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the classic world of darkness. Britta Ashcroft the Toreador was played by Rebecca Steigelfest. Johnny Saxon the Bruja was played by Garrett Gabby. Miles Davenport the Venture was played by Tim Davis. Neil Foster the Malkavian was played by Rob Meerhead. Wynn Cabot the Gangrel was played by Erica Webb. Your storyteller was Lex Lopez. Recording by Rebecca Steigelfest. This episode was edited by Rob Meerhead. The music used in this episode was January Grunge Love Fest by Technoax. Visit them online at technoax.com. Path of Night uses the 20th anniversary edition rule set of Vampire the Masquerade with a few limited house rules. Vampire the Masquerade is owned by Paradox Interactive. Make sure to subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Twitter at Path of Night Pod, on Facebook at facebook.com slash Path of Night Podcast, or email us at Path of Night Podcast at gmail.com. See you next time, Kindred. This is the best use of Madman's Quill I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> But you don't. I saw your face, and you're like, "No, he did not." <laughs> I don't even know what level that is, but it's crazy. <laughs> oh, it's a combo. It's like it's pretty okay. low. It's, okay, it's actually very easy. Yo, yeah, I'm be real. A, no, no, no. I did you not. You read the think... calligraphy, and then you go crazy. No, I did not think there was a discipline use. <laughs> <laughs> This I mean, is news to me. That's yeah. why it's so good. I, I assumed he had been passioned up somehow. Mm. No, but, I just straight up assumed this was him. I mean, at some level it is. I mean, yeah. Anyways, I think this is a culmination of several different things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's a lot to unpack going on here. I mean, there's so much crazy. In this sense. Um... Miles, I, my- I need you to go into the vaults and take the dragon fire and burn the entire city. <laughs> 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 <sighs>